All right, keep up the great work. All right, so now what we want to look at is we want to find out what we actually need to do. What are the processes? What are the things that we can do to look for opportunities to integrate into our customers' businesses where we can become that additional resource and form those long-term mutually beneficial partnerships with them, right? First thing is, um, I want to remind you, I want to just tell you a quick story about Rodney. Now, Rodney worked for a calendar company. He worked for them for over 40 years and the amazing thing was he was part of a team of 17 salespeople and yet on his own, a 65-year-old man who went for dialysis for four hours, three days a week, he managed to sell 50% of the calendar company's business. Now think about that. What did it take? And when I interviewed Rodney, right, I asked him a number of questions and he, when he answered, it was amazing how his answers literally described the process that you'll need to follow or the process that you can follow to start looking for opportunities to integrate into your customers' businesses, right? So let's go through what Rodney said he actually did. First thing was, Rodney said he created an unforgettable customer experience. Now, think about your own markets, your own customers, etc. Do you wow them on a daily basis? Do you consistently add meaningful value to the relationship? Do you appreciate them? Because remember, Research shows that 85% of customers don't leave because of price, the price is too high. They rather leave because they don't feel appreciated. So think about your business. Have you created an unforgettable customer experience? Have you got a system, um, a, a routine, a daily routine that supports you to consistently create an unforgettable customer experience where you wow your customers on an ongoing basis because remember once you start to wow your customers on an ongoing basis they'll become raving fans they'll video recorded testimonials for you they might even edify you by picking up the phone and phoning somebody and telling you or telling them how remarkable both you and your organization are so think about your business what can you do to improve that unforgettable customer experience or to create an unforgettable customer experience for your customers. Next, the next thing that, that Rodney did was he made buying from his organization as simple as possible. Now think about your own buying process. Is it complicated? Does it add to the frustration of your customers or does it add to the simplicity of the sale? Now the way that Rodney did it was he built a trust to such a degree with these customers that every single month his colleagues would go walking around with loads of samples which they had to put on the floor and it would take over an hour for customers to decide on what calendars they wanted for the year. Rodney built up trust and what he used to do was he would arrive at his customers, he would have already selected the calendar they should choose, he completed the order and he literally pushed the order across in front of the uh, customer and he said to them, please put your John Hancock on the order, which they did. So he made doing business with his organization as simple as possible. Think about your own organization. How difficult is it to do business? Is completing a credit application an absolute pain in the butt? Is um, dealing with your finance department, is it difficult? Um, is any interaction that your customers have with your business, is it too complicated? And if it is, I get that you aren't really in a position to make those changes. But you are in a position to highlight the challenges. And that's exactly what I'd recommend you do is if you identify any areas where your organization's selling process is complicated or it's something that could add to your customers' frustrations, please highlight it to your leadership with solutions. Don't just complain about it. Highlight the challenge and make some recommendations on how to improve it. Next thing that Rodney did was he was always proactive. In other words, he was constantly looking for opportunities. He would go and have a look and he would say, what um, is the company doing? What's the company's 
process this year. What would be a perfect calendar to suit that? He also made sure that he completed the order before arriving. So let's look at a couple of proactive ways that uh, other companies or other examples, right? When I used to own my factory in Benoni, um, I had an overhead crane that needed to be serviced once a year. Well, just before it was time for servicing, the guy Andre that used to come and do that for me would make a phone call, make an appointment and pitch up. What about you? What can you proactively do to engage your customers? What can you proactively do to make ordering your product as simple as possible? Next, he communicated regularly with his customers. Now think about that. Showing your customers appreciation, yes, of course, is finding innovative ways to add value, but one of the best ways to appreciate your customers is to keep them in or, or, or keep communicating with them on an ongoing basis. You want to keep them in the loop. They need to know what's going on. Now imagine, if you have a challenge with the delivery and you do nothing about it, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, the customer is going to be angry. But if you proactively went and had a look in the morning and you went, okay, so what deliveries might be delayed or may not arrive on time? And at 8 o'clock in the morning, you call the customer and you tell them, that there may be a delay or there will be a delay, at that stage they're going to go, wow, great customer service. Eight hours later, different situation. They are going to be angry. So find out proactive ways of finding processes, um, finding or, or examining your deliveries in the morning. What can you proactively do on a daily, ongoing basis to support you to be or to add that extra service, all right? The next thing, can you be trusted? Because that was the one thing Rodney did so well. Remember, he was so well trusted that he would arrive, now think about the time he saved. Instead of sitting around for an hour letting them select their own calendars, Rodney saved buckets of time because he built up trust, because he invested the time to get to know what was going on at the organization so that his recommendations were so perfect. The recommendations about the calendars he recommended they printed were so perfect that over the years they just trusted him. All they did every single year they would just put there as he termed it, their John Hancock on the order and they would get their calendar. So it saved them loads of time, saved him loads of time. I mean, just as an example, I spent a day with um, some of the other reps. They managed to see seven customers in a day. Rodney saw 15. The day that I spent with Rodney, he managed to see 15 customers and leave with 15 signed orders. What about you? How simple is doing business with your organization. How proactive are you at finding solutions, making ordering from your company as simple as possible? Next, he said that he was friendly and easy to deal with. Now think about it. That is just goes without saying. Remember, sales is actually more about people than it is about product. Because remember, no organization has ever bought one of your products. People at those organizations do. Now think about it. What can you do to form a relationship, to show the people how much you care? Are you friendly? Do you use everybody's name as you arrive from the tea lady through to the managing director? Do you know everybody's names? Do you go to the accounts department in the middle of the month just to hand them some uh, biscuits or something? Or do you just go to see them at the end of the month when you're demanding and looking for a check? So think about people. How can you improve your people skills? How can you improve the way you interact and engage with the people at your customers? The next thing you need to understand is Rodney was always available. So make sure, I know these sound like, it's like sales 101 tips, right? But are you always available, right? At five o'clock, does your mobile phone go off? because you're no longer working? Or is your phone on 24 hours a day? Would you drop something at 10 o'clock at night to go and help a customer? I mean, sincerely, would you really? Because that's what Rodney would do. And his customers knew that. So we're talking about integrating, right? 
Part of integrating is being available. Are you always available? Do you find ways to consistently exceed your customers' expectations on every level? Because, I mean, I, I think you've heard the old adage, under promise and over deliver. Wow. <laughs> that just sounds ridiculous, right? I say promise plenty and then deliver way, way more than that. So, how can you promise your customers plenty and what are you going to do on an ongoing basis to make sure that you exceed those expectations on every single level? Do you ask customers for referrals? Because remember, when you create an unforgettable customer experience, one of the benefits, one of the offshoots is they will record recorded testimonials for you and they will refer you to other companies and possibly even edify you. So think about it, right? Do you have a strategy where you ask for referrals, where you ask for recorded testimonials? And most importantly, before you can ask for those recorded testimonials, etc., you need to have a system, a routine, a process that will amaze your customers. In other words, a way that you will consistently wow your customers and create an unforgettable customer experience.